Hey folks, welcome back to the Metal Mill 52 workshop. My name is Bill, this is my shop, and the current project I'm working on is an LBSC Titch locomotive, a little three and a half inch gauge locomotive. This is actually what it looks like so far, and it's coming together nicely. I'm trying to slowly but surely get it done and get it ready to run on air. So the project this week has been machining the steam chests, and I've got some a lot of good material to share with you some tips and techniques and also a major don't if you stay tuned toward the end you'll see that I had a major incident with this steam chest this morning it was very frustrating and but I, I was able to fix it I believe I got it fixed satisfactory so we'll find out about that um, but you'll stay tuned and, and you'll see what I'm talking about but thanks again everybody I enjoyed having you along this journey Please stay tuned. This will probably be about a 20 minute video, I guess, with the different segments. Um, and next week, we'll hopefully show you the machining of the steam chest covers and the actual drilling and tapping of the cylinders here. All right, thanks everybody. Have a great week. All right, the next step in getting the locomotive to run on air is to machine the steam chests. And the steam chests sit on top of the cylinders like this this part right here is the inlet for the steam coming in. This boss here will be machined to accept this little packing gland nut and it'll have the piston rod or the valve rod going back and forth through it. And this bit, this boss here is basically just cast on to facilitate machining if you're turning this thing in a lathe. I'm going to leave it on because it looks kind of cool it looks like a little snifter valve area and it adds a little bit of weight and which is a good thing for this tiny little locomotive. Here's the valves, that's what they look like already. So the, um, and of course, I don't think I mentioned this, but the steam chests each have a little cover like that that goes on it. So the first things first is we'll machine the steam chests and it's a pretty basic milling operation. I've laid out for myself just to make it easy, easily, easy, easy to think about and to uh, plan out the, the different the sizes and what where I'm drilling and tapping. Um, I did, did a, a double scale on graph paper here so highly recommend that if you have a chance to do that when you're doing a project like this. But the first thing first is we'll take these over to the vise and the big vise and clamp them in there and file the debris there's a little bit of casting flash that needs to get filed out. It'll just make it a lot easier to machine if the casting flash is removed. And I've also, it's been a little while since I've checked my milling machine for tram, so I just checked that again. I'll show that. And um, always a good idea if you're getting ready to machine something that on the mill that's pretty detailed and it has to be accurate. So off to the next step. I just want to show how I check the accuracy of the mill alignment device and uh, what, this is my favorite tool for it. It's a Sterrett back plunger gauge. You can use it in a lot of different orientations but this is the, the nicest one. It makes it so easy instead of fiddling with a little finger gauge and I, as, as you can see I've got my soft jaws, aluminum soft jaws in the mill so I have a little plate inside there and um, I'm able to to check it all the way across the face of it and you know it's it's very uniform so the it's still aligned just like it was and um, certainly good enough for machining starting to machine the steam chest this is what they look like after they're filed <coughs> excuse me so I just try to take off every little burr and ridge generally speaking and then I, I measured it with a caliper. Really only going to have to reduce about 30 thousandths in this dimension total. So it's always good to have that in mind before you start. So I don't want to go hog wild. I just want to clean this, this surface up first. And then I'll flip it over and clean this surface up. And then we can do the, the two ends. And then the, and the inside and the drilling and tapping. And off we All go. All right. Well, if machine the outside of both of these steam chests. I got them to the proper dimension. The width being an, uh, well, when I say width, I mean this dimension here, 
an inch and three sixteenths, and this dimension an inch and three quarters. I have not, I did make the bosses flat basically, but I have not machined them to thickness or you know, made the bosses the right length. Um, I, I did want to show my little setup here. You can see I've got it sandwiched. I've got it blocked up on a couple of, sorry, got it blocked up in a little half inch squares. And that is to accommodate the the uh, inlet there, the steam inlet, inlet that's pointed downwards in some cases, or in this case, I've got it, it's it's just flat across the bottom. But <clears throat> on because the bosses are wider than the body, I've got a couple of pieces of cold rolled steel to help clamp on the center part here. And it's narrower than the overall. So it's it's um it helps you want to uh, if you just put it in the vise without something like that you'll have rocking which is not what you want to have while you're milling so it's been a productive couple of hours just to basically get these things filed and to the rough outside dimensions next will be the thickness and then milling the inside dimensions and then milling the bosses to the right right dimensions and then the final the, the part that you want to have the ultimate focus on, of course, is the dimensions for drilling the holes and drilling and tapping the holes for the steam chest and the, the valve packing. So it's a good time after working on this for a couple of hours tonight. I'm going to take a break and come back at it tomorrow. Okay, tonight I'm just trying to get the um, outside edges of the steam chest machine down to a half inch, so it's a half inch thick. I did one side already. I just wanted to show the setup here. These soft jaws are really excellent for stuff like this. And having this slot in here, you can see I can get full support on the whole outline. And um, there's a little place for the boss. This is left over from my Alan Mogul project um, when I machined that. I can't even remember what part I was making for these soft jaws, but these are aluminum soft jaws and they really help. All right, here we go. This side is complete. The um, cutter did a really nice job. It's funny, the bronze, it's a lot different from machining other materials like steel and cast iron. It, you really can kind of see it kind of moves the, the metal moves a lot is what I'm trying to say. Another point I wanted to make is this boss here is supposed to get machined down to 5 16 outside diameter. So as you can see, I went ahead and flattened it so it's the same on the same plane as the rest of the casting is. And now I, I'm going to flip it over. I'll finish on the other side. I should have about 15th hour or so to machine from that side so it's evenly cut down to the half inch height. Okay, this one just finished. I just miked it. Let me show you the fit on there. And it's, here I'll pull it off right at 500 thou so again lucky than good take it out deburr it and uh, do the other one tonight and tomorrow night i'll come back and route, uh, route out <laughs> mill out the insides to the right thicknesses okay with the uh, thickness machine down to a half inch then i blued the top surface <clears throat> just with a sharpie marker and i laid out some lines to mill out to the correct dimension. There's not a lot, thankfully there's not a lot of material to remove there. And the lines are not perfect, but they'll be a good guide. I'm gonna start out with my 3 8 inch end mill because it's sturdy and it won't deflect much. And I'll put in a smaller one, like a quarter inch to finish up. Okay, got that one done. I would stop and mic, and I would just caution you that um, you do get a little bit of a wire edge built up, so be careful when you're miking the uh, dimensions. But I got pretty close. I actually made it just a wee bit thinner in a couple of spots, a couple of sides, like, and unfortunately you don't want to really want to do that, but it'll be okay, just a little bit thinner than it needed to be on the edges there. And I did use, they ended up using the quarter inch end mill the 3 8 one was too unwieldy. I just put the second one in and did my layout lines. I just want to point this out. On some of these, there's not going to be a lot of extra material to remove 
This is the side here that gets milled down to a 3 16 of an inch thickness and um, the out, out, outboard edge. This is the inboard edge which is the quarter inch and as you can see, you can barely see the line there. I'm just going to have to clean it up. The ends will be a little bit, but not more than about 15 or 20 thou at the most on either side. So it should be quick work, but time to be careful. Okay, I got the second one milled down and was a little bit more careful. And it came out really good right on, on the measurements. So I'm going to clean up for tonight and then tomorrow night I'll come back. This is just Monday night. Right now I'll come back and drill the holes and I did a grid layout I'll show you kind of that so I can use my DRO that was kind of the purpose of me doing the giant scale drawing so if you orient it flip it around this away the zero zero point is right here so I'll indicate off of that and I'll be able to drill the holes on the on the part and what I'll do is drill just the tacking size holes for the 540 screws on the, the thicker part of the web and the the two and the thinner part are the will be the tapping size for the 348 screws <clears throat> and then that that will become the template for marking the cylinders but we'll get to that eventually but I might as well drill those holes while I can and then the only remaining thing for these will be turning all these to size, and I've got an idea about that. And um, drilling and tapping here for the steam inlet, and drilling and tapping the back one for the uh, valve guide. And one thing I did want to point out, you see all this, when you're using the end mill, the side of it, um, it creates a lot of this needle-like shavings and this this is bronze, so it's kind of a shame to waste it, but I'm going to vacuum it all up and just be real careful with it because it's all, like I said, kind of like a needle. It'll poke you. You definitely don't want to um, use va use an air air hose to blast it out into the, in the atmosphere. Either sweep it up, scoop it up, or vacuum it up to contain it. Okay, here we have the first set of holes drilled in the steam chest and I'll just show you a little bit you can see the setup is the same that I used for milling out the inside in fact I just left this one sitting here overnight but at first I, I carefully zero zeroed it I indexed on this edge here and this edge here so I set this corner as my zero zero and I created a grid pattern that I could use my DRO for and um, drill the holes all the way around all of the larger holes or I think it's number 38, which is a tapping size hole for 540 screws. And these are smaller. I think they're number 47. Therefore, the tapping size for the 348 screws that I'm going to use here. And the only reason for the smaller ones is that this web is 3 16 of an inch. It's smaller, so it makes sense to use the smaller. And that's, the, that's what this drill is here. And you can see the 38 drill is a lot larger. So I'll take this one out, clean up the vise, deburr everything, and put the next one in and let it have a turn. I am machining the second of the steam cylinder chest. I've drilled the hole, tapped it for the steam entrance, and I machined the uh, top of it to the required 5 16 inch tall. And now what I'm doing, I've got a boring head here, and I'm running, I've got the tool facing inwards, and I'm running it in reverse to machine the little stem down to the 5 16 inch diameter. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Oops. Taking fairly light cuts, although that's not really a big deal here. Speeding slowly by hand. And stopping it just as it comes to contact with the sh shoulder of the part there. Not that it is a critical thing, but right about there. Let's go up. Stop it. And now I can mic it and I'll just keep 
repeating them. I'm pretty close here. Probably only have another 15th hour or so to get it down to the 5 16 inch band. And I thought I'd shoot a little video here before I do the uh, outside of the second one. I've, I've uh, show, here's my setup. May or may not be the best, but it seems to have worked so far. And it's pretty self-explanatory the steps that I've done. And now I'm using a boring head. I run it in reverse with the tool pointed inward to uh, get to the diameter. I'm actually going a little bit less than the 5 eighths of an inch diameter because I needed to do that on one of them to clean up so I'm doing it all on the same so they're uniform. Okay, that came out pretty nice. Just did one pass and the, the outside diameter instead of uh, 5 eighths which is 0.625 on these as, as I mentioned it's a little less it's right around 600,000. So now I'll release it from the vise, flip it over, and turn the uh, outside diameter of the other side. Well, this is interesting and frustrating. In the middle of turning the, just <laughs> the last operation for this particular part, the um, boring bar caught this, twisted it in the vise, and it just, where that block was that I had, it collapsed it and, and mis made it misshapen. So, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> I'm trying to rescue the part I figure, worst case scenario, I either order a new casting or get a piece of 5 8 inch brass and just make it from scratch, which I can. But if, I, if possible, this bronze is so very soft that what I'm trying to do, I've got it in <clears throat> a thick piece of steel here and a clamp, and I'm just trying to tighten this clamp with some vice grips and see if I can press it basically use the pressure of the screw to press it back out flat again. If I can save the part, I will. If not, then I'll start over again and order a piece of 5 8 inch brass. But the main reason I'm showing this is that my clamping technique in the mill, this is a danger for it. So be careful if you do that. Probably should have done it sideways <clears throat> where the clamping force was against both of these force, uh, faces versus edgewise. Alright, I figured if I was going to try to fix this thing, I might do it everything I possibly can to have it come out right. So, what I'm doing here, I've got it in a vise, a nice uh, big C-clamp, the biggest one I've got with the acne thread. And I'm heating the thing up, you can see it's starting to turn red. Then, I don't know if it'll show up real good on the video, but it's nice and uh, getting nice and red on the damaged portion. And I'm just increasing the torque on the end here. I got a vice grip on the end of the C-clamp. Just going to keep cranking that down until I get it flat as it can be. Okay, I took it out of the C-clamp. It's still hot as blazes. I used my channel locks to uh, pick it up. And I've got it in that steel block for a couple reasons. Because the steel block got hot, obviously, when I heated it all up. And now I've got it in, in the regular vice. And I've just tightened it up, not, not tremendously, but just a little bit. And my, my plan is to let it cool here, and um, it should bring it into more parallel, too, because the other side, although not, not as badly damaged as this side, the other side was a little bit bowed. Um, so we'll see. I'm going to let it cool for a while, and hopefully it'll, it'll be good. If not, then I'll make a new one. Okay, hey, let me show you these things side by side. So... This is the one that I ruined this morning in the milling machine, and this is the one that I didn't ruin that is uh, all good to go. One, I'll show you the didn't ruin first. What I've done is just on this one, all I had to do was file out the corners. I just put it in a vise and used my little triangular file and filed out the corners, the rounded part, and then used a regular file to file the flats. And I have gone through all the threaded portions again with the taps that were called for. It's a 3 16 by 40 threads here and this is a 5 16 by 32 thread here. And I'll show you how the this is a little piece of the 5 32nd inch um, stainless steel that I used for the piston rods. It's the same material that gets used for the valves although I'll turn down a portion down to 8th inch and then thread that probably uh, 5 to number 540. So that's all good in that one. This one actually I think I've rescued it okay. It's not the prettiest but it doesn't look terrible either and 
I think heating it really helped. I looked at it very closely, although you see some lines there. There's no cracks in it, and that was the biggest problem, or that would be the biggest problem if there were. But I think it's fine. I think the alignment is okay, and of course I did clean it up a little bit by filing out the corners and then filing the different surfaces. So we'll see. Like I said, I mean, I'm not afraid to make it over again if I have to, but since the, the part seems to be serviceable and it was an interesting rescue thing, I am very, very glad that I heated the thing up. You'll, you saw how hot I got it, and it did seem to make a difference in um, correcting the geometry and I think that from the little bit I understand about metallurgy and all that's a, a good idea to kind of um, help things come back into a line that, that heating it cherry red for trying to form it. Alright so this will be the last segment of this week's video. I was hoping to get a little further along but I think what I'll do is just cut it off here at the end. The next thing will be machining the valve chest covers and then of course drilling and tapping the holes in the cylinders so I'll, that'll be my what I'm working on this coming week and I'll do next week's segment about that so thanks again everybody I've really enjoyed having you along this journey and um, stay tuned for further updates take care now